Hey YouTubers, it's Army Truck Josh here. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys what I keep for a bug out bag. It's a little different than what you would find for a regular uh, military style bug out bag because, well, let's face it, I'm not going to be doing military tasks if it's that kind of thing. So I start with actually my bag, which is a three day assault pack. Two very large pockets, easy to organize. It's got the Molly attachments so you can add additional stuff. Um, you just all you need is some clips and you can attach whatever you want to it almost it has a waist belt on it I put a rigid frame inside of it so it is a load bearing pack so you can actually attach more because it actually rests on your hips rather than your uh, shoulders so it's not going to wreck your back you can walk a long ways with this and it doesn't feel like you're carrying 80 pounds though it'll hold 80 pounds um, another thing you want to think about is keep it as light as possible uh, get everything you need, but make sure it's light. Um, very important to keep everything light, otherwise you're going to wear yourself down and make yourself more susceptible to either being captured or attacked or whatever the circumstance may be. Um, next thing I got is an e-tool, <laughs> entrenching tool. Get this out of the way. I got an entrenching tool and a case. You can see it in there. I'm not going to try to dig it out. It's just a folding e-tool works great that attaches to the molly system again right here two snaps works right into the webbing also have a walking stick helps you keep your balance when you need to um, if you're wading through rivers or anything it works great for that you're gonna want some sort of signal in case you do need a signal for help don't light them if you don't need them you're just gonna attract attention to your position and sometimes that's not what you want. Cordage is very important. Use it for everything. Even if you have to tourniquet something, cordage, you're going to need it. As for shelter, I like to keep some black plastic. I got some garbage bags in here. I think there's like a black party tablecloth. Um, there's a poncho in there also. I just keep a small shelter roll. It's a start. It keeps things dry. Um, by no means is it a permanent shelter. It's just something to get over your head for the time being. Um, food is a very important thing. I keep six days worth of food rations. Now these are just emergency food bars. You can get them at almost any Army Surplus store. I don't go with MREs because they're bulky. They take up too much space. Uh, MREs are great if you have a place to store them, but in a three-day assault pack you want to keep as little as possible. So I have three packages, three days each. So actually that's nine days, not six, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> I also have a mess kit. You can pick them up at Walmart for seven or eight bucks. Just unscrew it. You got a pan. You got, I guess you would call it a kettle, but it's not that deep. I do have some more dried food in here. It's just a soup kit. Lid, pan. Like I said, you got a bowl that goes on top. All of it fits together. The cup right there was originally inside of it, but it's not that big, so I was okay with omitting it from the actual mess kit. I'll put that together later. It's hard to do one-handed. Uh, There's a little spatula and spoon set. They come apart. I think I got it at Walmart for a couple bucks. Nice and cheap. You got a knife option, spork, all that good stuff. All in one. Need something to light your fire? Zip was a good start. Not a bad idea. Like I said, a cup for any hot liquid you want to drink or cold liquids. Skewers are a good thing to have for cooking anything you may catch. I'll show you some weapons that I would use in the field if needed. Um, this, is a, this is a sealed package. I have right here is going to be some spices just in case you really want some flavor. Extra spoons. I got some belt in there. It's just kind of miscellaneous stuff. There's chopsticks. Uh, Multi-tool, like I said, the spices, there's two web belts in there. Hand sanitizer so you can keep clean, and some wet fire fire starters. I'll get more into detail on them a little later in the video. Uh, bottle opener and can opener. Important. Keep a bottle opener and can opener with you. If you end up with a can and no can opener, it doesn't do you much good. Now, there are ways to get it in a can without a can opener. You could use a rock. Or my preferred way, you take a uh, piece of nice concrete, 
and you take that can, pretend that's a can, and you rub the top of the can on the concrete until it thins out, and then you can actually squeeze the can and the top pops off. It's a pretty cool trick. Um, phone charger, in case you come across a phone. Most things are using mini USB now, or micro USB. Um, most things are using that, so if you keep a phone charger with you, and you happen to find a phone that still works, you can charge it. Uh, this is actually a little fishing tool. It's like nail clippers and a pick and some stuff. Doesn't hurt to have it. Uh, this would kind of classify as sun protection and camouflage, which are two things you want to keep around. Uh, you can wrap this around your head and keep the sun off of you so you don't get sunburned. Wet it, it can keep you cool. Um, also, you know, you can use it as camouflage to blend in. I have two of them. I actually have one that's a sand color, and I have one that's that. It's uh, called a shamag. It's pretty much a large scarf, typically used in the Middle East. It's like a headdress slash sun protection. Um, some troops actually wear them, some of our troops. Um, sunglasses are important. Keep the sun out of your eyes so you can see what's coming at you. I have two or three pairs, just to be sure, because they may wear out. Uh, camouflage, again, important so people don't see you. Got a mirror or two if you want to signal with it. Now to the fun part, weaponry. I don't know why I have my climbing stuff in there, but it doesn't hurt to have some climbing gear. They're aluminum, it weighs less than a quarter pound. So, um, this is actually a collapsible baton, you can see. It, you just kind of sling it. And you got a good old fashioned metal beating stick. Good to have, not legal in all states, so don't carry it with you if you don't know. A spearhead, you can get a stick, make it fit, and you can go hunting. I have a little pistol crossbow. Let's see if I can get a better angle on that. Pistol crossbow, picked it up for about 50 bucks. Uh, it's relatively accurate, it's not super strong, but it's small. You can hunt with it, you might be able to ward off enemies with it, depending on what you're fighting. Um, if you're fighting, you may not be fighting, you may just be trying to survive, because you got stuck somewhere. Um, it fires these little 6 inch bolts, I keep them sealed so that they don't corrode or anything. Um, fires the 6 inch bolts, and uh, it, it's good enough, it'll penetrate about an inch into an oak tree, so it's got some power to it. Um, I keep a this is actually an old pilot's knife from uh, late World War II up until Vietnam era. Stacked leather handle. Looks just like a K-bar inside. It does have this stuff so you can mount it as a bayonet if you get the lug for it. Um, it's designed to cut through the fuselage of a plane if you're stuck, so it's a pretty tough knife. It's about a quarter inch thick. Um, I also carry a SOG Fast Hawk. This is actually a great little tomahawk. Pick them up for about 20 bucks just about anywhere. If, if you don't have these in your area, you are truly in the boondocks. Um, it's weighted perfectly for throwing if you need to throw it. I don't recommend throwing your weapons away. It's not good. Uh, the little hatch, hatch marked area here is for so you can hammer a nail like that. Um, you got the spiky part so you can pierce through something. And then you can actually chop wood or, you know cut things if you need to with that. And it's actually pretty sharp. It's not incredibly sharp, but for a tomahawk it's pretty good. And it does throw very nicely. Uh, moving along. I keep all this stuff here in a little dry box. The reason I keep it in a dry box is because it's stuff I want to keep dry. All right. I got some markers and some paper in case I need to leave notes for followers if anybody's coming behind me. Uh, let them know what's going on. Be like, you know, whatever kind of apocalypse we're dealing with, if it's apocalypse. You want them to know ahead of time so that they don't end up getting caught up in it. Alright. I also have a fishing kit. So you can fish, catch fish, eat fish, survive. Emergency blanket. I don't know. Some people say they work, some people say they don't. It can't hurt. You can use it as shelter at least. A um, little bit of entertainment. A pack of cards. These are uh, Florida DOC correctional cards so you get to look at all the all the bad guys while you're playing cards. Uh, this is a wire saw so you can cut some trees if you need some kindling or something. Right here we got a mirror. Works great for signaling. Again, and you can do your hair but it's not going to matter because we're talking 
apocalyptic here. Uh, small glow sticks, large glow sticks. This here is actually a drinking straw. You take the cap off, there's a little mouthpiece, and the water comes through the bottom. It's a charcoal filter. Um, it'll help filter out impurities. I recommend using it with the uh, two-part iodine tablets to um, clear out any type of contaminants that might be in there. Fire starting kits are important. I told you I would talk more about this. I have a magnesium fire starter, okay? Scrape off some magnesium, spark the magnesium. If that does not work for you, if it is wet, if it does not want to work or light, these are called wet fire. They're from, I believe, the company is uh, United Survival or something like that. Um, but they work great. You scrape off a little of this, it's a little soft block. It looks like a little tiny ice cube, but it's soft. Uh, you scrape off a little bit, it's almost like a soap. And uh, it's highly flammable. You spark that, it will light. Wet or dry. It will float in water and still burn. Um, that's all I got for that small dry box section. Like I said, this stuff all goes in my dry box because I want to keep it dry as possible. Then we go on to tools. I keep them all in this old binocular case. I have two multi-tools, different stuff on each one. Some tape, WD-40. Duct tape is important. Always got to have it. I got some tubing. Might be able to use it for drinking or tying something together, whatever you want to end up doing. Pliers, medical tape. I don't know why that's in with my tools. I got a small saw blade. Good for cutting things up. And uh, here you got some zip ties, hold things together, whatever you might need. Small screwdriver, more tape. I uh, can't have enough tape. Pulleys, in case you need to lift something that's way too heavy for you to lift alone. Uh, these are just medical scissors, they're good for cutting things. Just about anything will cut. Um, they're just cheapos out of a cheap medical kit. Small flashlight, so you can see what you're doing if you have to see what you're doing in the dark. A pair of small vice grips. Here I got a sharpening stone. It's fine and coarse, so you can sharpen your knives. Important because dull knife becomes a stick made out of metal. A pair of like, channel lock pliers, I guess. Not channel locks, uh, just regular adjustable pliers. This is a patch kit for vinyl, in case you have a raft or something that you want to patch. I have a full combat medical kit. So anything from a small little boo-boo, all the way up to a, a chest wound or anything. I can patch it up and hopefully keep people alive. Then we move on to uh, sanitation and all that. I keep it in this bag, little leather bag. I don't know where it came from. Not very tactical, but it'll work. Um, deodorant is important. You're going to have to have... Uh, you know, some stuff to keep yourself clean, because if you end up getting wounded and you are not clean, you'll end up with an infection. <clears throat> a little uh, tiger bomb for those days when you wake up sore, a razor so you can shave, a pair of scissors so you can trim up if you need to. Nobody likes to eat their own beard. Uh, this here is actually a folding toothbrush. Let's see if I can't get it apart one-handed. Probably not, but... Come on. There we go. Folding toothbrush, toothpaste, and these are actually towels. They fold out to be about 12, 12 inches by 18 inches, uh, but you get them wet and they turn into a towel. Got some soap. And then in this cup here, I have some miscellaneous little smoke fireworks and whatnot. They actually work great for a distraction if needed, or you can put up a smoke screen. Um, that pretty much concludes everything I'm going to keep in my bug out bag. And, um, like I said, it does all fit. It ends up weighing about 40 pounds. Um, sounds heavy, but like I said, it is a load-bearing backpack, so it carries on your hips, so it's a little more centered. And, uh, it doesn't hurt your back as badly as it would if you were carrying it on your shoulders. Um, again, this is Army Truck Josh. Thanks for watching. And, uh, stay prepped.